Welcome back everybody, Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Today is episode six of A Decade of Homelessness. And today's episode, I'm gonna talk about my run for the Oakland mayor and what inspired me to do that. So we have to go back all the way to uh, Mike Lee. Mike Lee in 2016 ran for Berkeley uh, city mayor and he didn't expect to win. And, and uh, his moniker for 2016 uh, for the Berkeley uh, mayor, you can even look this up, old bum for mayor. <laughs> and yeah, you, you see Mike Lee's picture and uh, he didn't expect to win. He didn't want to win because he wasn't a politician. What he did, he used the platform, the mayor platform, to talk about homelessness in Berkeley at the time. And so that was one of the things that, that I learned from Mike Lee. Uh, use the mayoral platform for to talk about homelessness. And we had already, Mike Lee and I were already the, the go-to people in 2018, 2019. We were the go-to people. We had news media coming in and talking to me directly, uh, not only locally, but overseas. We're talking Paris, France, India, uh, Canada, Mexico, uh, Burma. And so there were a lot of uh, countries that came in to interview um, because also I was running for the Oakland mayor. And uh, it was unheard of that, wow, we have a homeless person running for mayor. And in 2018, uh, there was a candidate on the uh, ballot for Oakland mayor who uh, was a fake homeless person. He lived on his boat uh, for 10 months until the marina kicked his ass out. So uh, that was uh, his bout with homelessness. And, and ever since then, he's, he's been, he's stolen from the, the homeless. I mean, who steals from the homeless? Um, and, and so uh, I actually worked against him. Uh, at one point, he, he was, I never considered him a friend. A lot of people say, well, he is your friend. No, he wasn't. He's an acquaintance. And Mike Lee even warned me about uh, this person and he said who's that ass clown that's talking to you a and he said he's going to screw you he's going to fuck you he's going to use you he's bad news stay away from him and I didn't listen to Mike Lee which I really should have uh, and, and he, he ended up royally screwing me and ending up uh, causing me to stay on the street uh, after 2018 because I, I had an opportunity to be off the street in uh, 20, uh, 2018, just before the mayoral election, and he was running for mayor. Uh, and and uh, so anyway, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't do it. I, I uh, will post the link to uh, that person in the comment section uh, so that you can watch a lot of the videos that, that I did along the way in my mayoral run. Uh, the first one that you're going to see uh, will be uh, me actually right after I had uh, made my filing, September 5th, 2019. And I was three years, three years ahead of everybody. So um, it, it, it was uh, an occasion because... Uh, I was very politically astute lo locally and, and uh, kept a, a prize as to what was going on, what wasn't going on, what was happening uh, within uh, the walls and the doors of City Hall. Uh, and there, were, there was a lot of uh, bad things going on and uh, there wasn't any bright spot. So it goes back all the way to Jerry Brown's uh, administration starting in 1999. Um, and, and we've had just a succession of poor to really 
extremely horrible administrators and administration, and that includes the city council. Because again, uh, a lot of these people have no clue uh, as to what they're doing. And, and unfortunately, the city of Oakland, a lot of parts of Oakland, uh, they've lost hope in, in the, uh, the election system. District 7, my district, is highly guilty of that because uh, they keep electing in the, the worst of the worst crooks, which are the, the Reeds. Uh, Larry you know, uh, did nothing for East Oakland District 7, literally, and then his sister, or not sister, but his daughter's following in the same footsteps. And, and he tried to appoint her uh, illegally uh, when he was uh, deciding to step down. But then he decided, that because he couldn't uh, uh, say who was going to succeed his seat and couldn't put his daughter in, um, he stayed in uh, office until the end of his term and his daughter ran for uh, election. And sadly, you know, because a Reed name is well known in uh, East Oakland and not so much the other candidates, uh, the second uh, generation of Reed got elected. And, and so we still have the corruption in District 7, East Oakland. Um, I did a lot for uh, fighting crime in, in Oakland. In fact, uh, in my last video, uh, how I got uh, my money was because I uh, worked as a CI, confidential informant, and I have <laughs> decades of experience as confidential informant and working uh, with confidential informants. And so we, I am very familiar with how the procedure and everything works. And, and uh, I was able to get inside of, of that operation and get uh, pictures and video, faces and names, everything that, that uh, the DEA Alameda County uh, Sheriff's Department needed. And, and all of that was uh, sent uh, quietly to the DEA through my personal um, uh, Wi-Fi and to the DEA office in San Francisco. And then they forward to uh, whoever, which was more than likely Alameda County, who did the actual takedown. And, and um, out of that, there were a lot of uh, other operations here on the East Bay. In fact, there were 13 uh, that were shut down that I was uh, a part of uh, uh, gaining a reward um, for my confidential inf information to law enforcement. And that's how uh, uh, I was paid with that. And most, pretty much all of that came through the recovered cash that was found on the properties that they seized. And, and so I, I get 10% uh, of the uh, cash. So, um, and it was substantial and, and it could have been a lot more, but uh, DEA just missed it by a few days, literally. Otherwise uh, they would have, instead of at the one location where I was, uh, they got 10 million in cash. If they had come three days earlier, there would have been 90, 90 million in cash. How do I know? Because I know the operation in there. I know how the uh, drops and pickups are handled. And, and it is ingenious how they, they were doing. And, and they wouldn't have known about any of this without me uh, actually being able to provide pictures and video uh, of the operation. Then um, on top of that, I, I worked with the uh, BART police uh, department because we had the Coliseum parking lot and um, a lot of the criminals were just right at the end of the street. And so uh, they were stripping cars there and, and all I had to do is just let them know, hey, so-and-so, that car, showed up it's here come get them and, and that's all i had to do uh and, and i did that uh for four years with the bart uh, police and then working with 
the uh, Alameda County Deputy Sheriffs and, and the Marshal's Office, the CHP. Uh, so I work with a lot of the law enforcement. I know uh, what works, what doesn't work, and, and um, what the weaknesses are of Oakland. As to the criminals, they know the weaknesses of Oakland. Uh, and so um, I, I ran for Oakland or ran for mayor of Oakland uh, with the uh, idea that, yes, I do bring to the table some real uh, solutions to Oakland's housing problem, the homeless problem, uh, living wage issue. Uh, what else? Uh, how the, the uh, entertainment is uh, dwindling and, and the high cost of it. I, I have a way to bring that into alignment and then also to fix a wrong that was created way back in the 60s called the 980 corridor. And I have a project for that, which not only uh, res uh, fixes that, uh, that moat, that modern day moat that separates West Oakland from downtown Oakland. We fix that and we restore nearly 2,500 single family homes under a new, a new, Oakland Housing Authority. We put that back in place. We have uh, Section 8 housing, real Section 8 housing, and they're built to the new modern uh, micro home standards that I have put in place. And each of the homes are at least interior volume, 600 square feet. That's a lot of room. That's, that's the average size of a brand new apartment in Oakland, 600 square feet. That's the new minimum for a living space. And uh, it is expandable, that home, uh, to uh, double that height and to go 1,200 square feet. And then we also have homes, or not homes, but uh, living spaces for available that will be approximately $100,000 or even less. And that's part of the cruise ship uh, entertainment uh, district in the Oakland Middle Harbor. And, and so those are just some of the projects that um, I had talked, spoken about during my mayoral run. And, and it resolves a lot of, a lot of issues. Also, it gives new opportunities for housing because each one of those cruise ships has approximately 3,000 living quarters. Some of them are very elegant. They, they have balconies that, that can, when the ship is uh, placed correctly, can have an incredible view of San Francisco and the San Francisco Bay. And imagine having that kind of housing. Uh, you don't have to cook because you can go downstairs or across the way and have a really nice meal uh, because you pay into a meal program as part of your uh, housing because you live permanently on that uh, cruise ship. A and the cruise ship housing starts at approximately 100,000, 90,000, 100,000 for uh, a 600, uh, 700 square foot uh, living cabin. And then some of them get smaller, uh, and then some are, are more inboard uh, where there's no window. But uh, those, those would be for the zero income, low income folks. And that's the incentive for them, uh, if they don't like that room, to work at, with the different opportunities that would be uh, presented to them so that they can get more, uh, a better room. Uh, and have it uh, covered. So there, there are a lot of programs that I plan on introducing. Uh, then the only reason why that uh, right after I had uh, filed uh, with the uh, Oakland Public Ethics Commission, I was handed a booklet and then uh, it said, I'm going to show you the page. And, and they eliminated me illegally literally and, and you're going to see that so i'm going to show you that right now uh, 
Okay, so you see the date um, of Friday, August 5th. That was the original filing date for all the nominations to make the ballot and, and all the paperwork had to uh, be in if, if there was an incumbent running, meaning that um, Libby Schaff was running. Uh, if she was able to run a third term, that would have been an incumbent running. But what the uh, office, uh, the crooked office of public ethics or lack of ethics uh, did, they were pushing. They said this year, because uh, Libby Shaft has termed out, there's no incumbent. They said that there's no incumbent this year. You have five, five extra days to gather signatures. And everything you had uh, had to be in on Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. And you'll see that in that picture, just a couple of lines down from that. <laughs> and so that's what all the candidates were told. But yet, here's what happened on the... the August 5th, Friday, August 5th, that morning, I had not still gotten my link for uh, to submit my candidacy uh, statement. And I had to do that before filing my paperwork. So already there was uh, some bad things going on with the lack of uh, public ethics uh, commission of Oakland. And I called and they said, well, we'll send that link right over. I don't know, you're, you're, something's wrong with your email. And, and then I told the stupid bitch, because she's been nothing but a problem, that look, I've had this email account since 1996, probably before you were born, and I've never had any issues. Your, your office is the issue. It's not my email. And so uh, she didn't say anything more. Uh, in fact, um, she she probably didn't even know that um, her office was going to change the date yet because she made no mention of, oh, by the way, today is the deadline for filing uh, your, uh, your uh, nomination petitions. And she didn't say that. And I was, I spoke to her for 10 minutes. Uh, and it, it, nothing went well. And, and so anyway, hung up I'm, and I'm waiting for the link. The link finally comes in. I start putting it in, um, but the link didn't come in until uh, 11 o'clock. And, and so that, that's really, you know, pushing it. But also I've also, uh, uh, conducted my meeting with uh, my signature gatherers. And uh, these are folks helping me uh, gather nomination signatures from all over Oakland. Uh, I needed uh, 100 of them. And, and uh, I was I was pretty close uh, to getting the minimum 50 at that point. Uh, but when uh, Miss Sims uh, called uh, me at one o'clock, uh, no, it was two o'clock in the afternoon, two in the afternoon. And she said, oh, to, I want to let you know today, all the nominations uh, petitions are due in uh, by five o'clock today. And she said, five o'clock. And, and I said, what? You, you told us we had until Wednesday the 17th. And because there's no incumbent. She said, there is an incumbent. What? Who's the incumbent? There's there's no person running uh, for mayor. She said, Lauren Taylor. I said, Lauren Taylor's a city council. He's not mayor. He's not an incumbent. And they said, that's what we're spotting it on. I said, oh man, that is so, that is so shit. Uh, he's not the mayor incumbent. That was an illegal change. Uh, and so that's how they eliminated myself and two others. 
but one fought back. And, and uh, she, uh, she managed to have the court order the uh, registrar voters to put her on the ballot. Uh, and that uh, what uh, the, the uh, Public Ethics Commission did was illegal. And so uh, there's a lot of things that the Public Ethics Commission did. Uh, number one, another candidate who was a homeless candidate, she penalized him 14 days because uh, she couldn't verify his address, his living address. It makes no fucking difference. This is just a preliminary paperwork. That's something uh, that should that could be dealt with at the end uh, once he's filing his paperwork uh, because that's what also initially bounced uh, a, a, one of the other female candidates a name the name and and they said you can't use that name and she says i've used this name for everything i've done uh, in uh, politics and she was right and so that got overturned. So that's how crooked <laughs> they, they'll argue the point in court. They're so crooked. Um, I'm hoping that I don't uh, meet up with these idiots again, but most likely I will be. Uh, and, and we'll see what happens. Uh, the registrar of voters also use the wrong algorithm. And that's how we ended up with this, the stupid mayor that we have right now named Shang Tao. Uh, Cause, uh, no, first thing, she shouldn't have been on the ballot. She didn't file her paperwork until 625. And that came out of a lot of other candidates that were down there filing their paperwork. She didn't even get into the building till 10 minutes before 5 o'clock. And each one of the filings takes 30 minutes. 30 minutes. So there's no way that Shang Tao would have made the 5 o'clock deadline. But yet, the crooked office stamped her paperwork at 4.55. They manually stamped it, 4.55. Crooked office. And that's how Shang Tao got on, on the ballot. So uh, um, she, she's an illegitimate mayor to begin with. Uh, but <laughs> the sad part is Lauren Taylor wouldn't have been any better either because he didn't do shit for uh, his district six. Uh, he, he talks about being a, a middle manager for a company. Well, you know, that's fine. This isn't middle, middle management. This is CEO of a city. And unless you, you've uh, been a CEO or CFO uh, of a corporation company or, um, an agency like myself you don't know what you're doing you have no idea what you're doing and everything's going to come as a big surprise to you and, and that was true for the last administrations libby Schaff, everything's you know i hate to say it bitch slapped her but then it did <laughs> the police academy the uh the uh ghost ship fire I mean, it was just one thing after another. Then it was the revolving door for the chief of police. Before her, it was Jean Kwan who couldn't keep a, couldn't make a decision to save her life, and caused Occupy Oakland. Only person, and then before that, it was Ron Dellums. Ron Dellums didn't want the job, but you, Oakland, <laughs> I can't believe a candidate tells you, don't vote for them, but yet you vote for them and put them in office, and they didn't want the position. So for four years, we got an absent mayor, literally. He was absent. If he wasn't absent, he was asleep. Literally, he fell asleep at meetings. <sighs> so, Oakland, you got to do better. While I may not be the best optic for Oakland, being a formerly homeless person, but I am the best optic to turn Oakland around and make something of Oakland.
bring back the pride of Oakland, bring back safety, bring back the, the community pride that we, we no longer have. And then we stop the criminals and the theft, the criminality, the sideshows, the illegal dumping. I dealt with that. I'll attach all of the different videos that I did uh, during my run for Oakland mayor in the comments so that you can see how much work I did. I worked harder than any of the other candidates that were on the uh, ballot. And then they, they eliminated the two homeless guys, me and uh, Albert Owens, right from the get-go. And they, they knew we didn't have the money to, to fight them, to get a lawyer, to go to court, and then do what um, Miss Victory did. Uh, to have the court say, no, you got to put them on there. And that's what should have happened. I actually did have a lawyer from Los Angeles who was willing to do it, but it, it was so short a time. We didn't even have 48 hours left. And, and so um, I just said, you know, we'll just do, we'll just go with this. And, and it was, it became a, a platform that I was going to use to talk about homelessness and the solutions that are on the table. I have the solutions. We have the properties. We have the funding foundations coming in, in, in place and online. And it's not going to cost taxpayers one penny. There's no new taxes. In fact, I'm looking to decrease taxes to help the, the uh, Oakland residents. So anyway, hopefully with the recall of Shane Tao, that it is successful. If it is successful and it does make the ballot uh, in May, then that opens the door for the immediate runoff for mayor. And I'll be on that immediate runoff. So hopefully we can make a, a good partnership together. I'm, when that happens, I'm going to be announcing a pizza party and pizza and drinks are on me. And then also come meet me, ask me the tough questions. What am I going to do for you? What am I going to do for you and your household? Make things better for you and the community. Thanks for joining me today. We'll be right back.